The most unique ways to play Warcraft. I'm actually wondering like what the most unique ways are to play WoW. Like there are like hardcore challenges, right? Where you can't die in WoW. And I'm pretty sure there are even more like challenges and stuff. Maybe you play with no gear, run around naked and you have to beat the game naked. Like that would be a funny way to actually beat the game. But yeah, let's find out what ways there are to play WoW. In World of Warcraft, be it retail or classic, there's a rather clear path of content that your character is supposed to go down. From that moment you enter the world as a fresh-faced adventurer, to going on quests and doing dungeons, gaining XP, learning new abilities and so on. Eventually you hit the level cap and have a wider array of options open up, such as PvP in the arena or PvE in raids. Aside from that, over the years WoW has fleshed out content with achievements, transmog collection, myth plus rated battlegrounds pet battles and tons more oh, but yeah. some players don't really care about all that gotta some catch players them all don't need a guided <laughs> path and whilst world of warcraft may be the classic theme park mmo where you come to try out all the set piece content some players treat it more like a sandbox a world separate True. from their own where they're free to explore, experiment, and just play the way they want. Today I want to take a look at some of the most unique ways that players have created- I've actually noticed this too where it comes like a classic WoW. If you look at retail, is there even any hardcore WoW for retail where you make a character and once you die it's over? I think that only exists for classic, but then again, like, it's definitely better on classic because the difficulty is higher. Like, if you're a low level character and you pull three mobs in classic WoW, there's a high chance you're gonna die to those three mobs if you're for example only level 15 or so right but if you do this on retail level 15 you can pull even five mobs and you still survive and you just kill them all right so yeah i see why it is maybe in retail but the thing is like you could do this in retail still like a uh, hardcore if you're like let's say doing dungeons and plus and stuff as well and you include this into it then there is some challenge in my opinion their own game within the game and check out the people who are famous in world of warcraft for how differently they played the game warriors in vanilla wow have a reputation for being difficult to level they are highly gear dependent lack rage That's generation true. early and are super reliant on a good weapon to really start putting out respectable damage anyone yes. who has leveled a warrior has that moment where the odds are fun to play you, and you classic. just straight up die to a mob the same level as you because they parry or dodge about six times times in a row it wouldn't be the warrior experience if this didn't happen now and again but what if picking one of the toughest classes to level was not already enough for you what if you wanted to abandon the one thing that warriors rely on so much and try oh. to hit level cap without ever having equipped any items at all well on 13th of february 2007 a video was uploaded to youtube showing an individual who had achieved just that Guts wow. Rot the Troll Warrior. The challenge was simple. Level 60, no weapons, no armor, only grinding. We've got Rock claiming about a six month time frame to get this done. Also, I noticed this character was on Airy Peak. That's where I started. Wait, wait a second. Uh, how long did he take? Also, I noticed this character was on weapons no armor only grinding we've got rock claiming about a six month time frame to get this six months so he was like grinding his character without any gear like literally naked for six months to maximum level that is insane guys like holy shit so much time invested into this project like okay but he's like the first person that did this right this gut rod guy right wow like Wow, congratulations, Scott Rod. You, you're in the Guinness uh, World Records book now for playing WoW Classic without gear and reaching max level. Like, like, this guy needs to be written down in the Guinness World Records book. Like, seriously. Like, definitely. It's done. Also, I noticed this character was on Airy Peak. That's where I started playing WoW back then Airy as well. Peak. And I was on there for years. I guess I just never came across uh, this crazy troll model, on this right? leveling journey. Funnily enough, Such if there was a class to do smile. this challenge on though, Troll Warrior is a very good pick. Trolls get extra because damage of regeneration. against beasts, which you can use to grind on, regeneration for a bit of extra health, yep. and berserking scaled with missing health back then. Certain key warrior abilities work well with this too. Underclap or Demo Shout. Yeah. 
They look actually cool in Transmox in the Vita. Fury Tree, you have in Rage, like Rampage Warriors. becomes more useful in TBC, and Bloodthirst doesn't actually need a weapon to be equipped in order to be used. This video gained a bunch of attention for this player, with now many rooting for him to push through TBC content and hit level 70, though Gutrot started to provide more update videos showing just how brutal this challenge was. Especially he died a lot. Portland, the That's why it was six months. Were pretty thin, and for a time he even went back to farm old zones such as Silithus or questing in western plaguelands. Yeah. But on October 22nd 2007, near eight months after the first upload, Gutrot released his grand finale, hitting level 70 in Senjin village, not far from where his journey began all that time ago. The final level was achieved by summoning an image of Archmage Vargoth to hand a quest in. This is usually part of a quest chain in Netherstorm, but wow. I guess you can summon him anywhere. The gathering of trolls and supporters alike was so huge that the server even went yeah, offline for a brief time. Something that in years to come, Blizzard would start to take a bit more of an aggressive stance on. I'm actually not surprised they had so much support for this because, like, that is a real challenge. Like, I actually think that this is almost... Can I say it's harder? Yeah, I think that's actually way harder than uh, if you level to max uh, on hardcore. Because, like, yeah, hardcore you can't die, but if you play super careful with, like, wow, hardcore to reach max level, you literally always pull one mob, you maybe have a list of super easy uh, quests. Like, you can get to uh, level 70 on a hardcore character way easier and faster than on a, a naked character that is not on hardcore. Because you just play super careful, you finish in maybe... I don't know, three months, maybe even faster than that. If you're on a hardcore character and you're like super slow and careful. But yeah, with like level 70 and six months at least, uh, yeah, if you're naked, it, it, it's, it's, it makes sense. Because your XP gain is going to be super, super, super minor. Sometimes you will get barely any XP or you do quests that maybe give you XP, but the mobs don't, right? So yeah, this is very slow a bit more of an aggressive stance on. Got Rot and his crew would then go on to raid Stormwind and create a what? truly unforgettable night for all those involved before leaving you the video with off. a simple message. Be uh, in Northrend. The follow-up to this and his level 80 his name would take should be, uh, quite forsaken, some time though. though. Gutrot, the repost right? of his invitation to his <laughs> level 80 ding being found on MMO Champion dating September 16th, 2009. There is also footage of the pre-ding event online but nothing from the famous troll himself. I think we can assume Gutrot did achieve his he goal doing of these hitting days? level 80 without weapons or armor but also created a legacy for players to follow. To be insane enough to take on what he started all those years ago. And during Vanilla Classic, a player would follow in Gutrot's footsteps called Voivid, who not only took on the naked <laughs> leveling Voivid. challenge, but did so as an undead, hardcore, no deaths warrior. Wait, which what? is like playing hard mode on mega hard mode. You I are guess kidding you have me. cannibalized to regenerate every so often against humanoid or undead mobs, but I'd imagine you're not too short on spare change because this challenge involves a ton of grinding mobs. Either way, challenge runs such as this that began all those years ago are starting to see more popularity once again. I actually think this would be more frustrating than dying in a regular hardcore. Like imagine you are without any gear, you're completely naked and you want to reach max level and you somehow manage to get to like let's say level 40, right? And you don't die and then you die. Like the amount of time you will have taken like to get to level 40 on such character will be three times if not even four times longer than on a character that is geared. Yeah, we're like four times longer. So you will have wasted several months already, maybe like three months or four to get to there and then you freaking die. Like you're gonna be super mad, like trust me. Like, I already have, like, uh, like I have a difficult time, like, deciding sometimes, should I play on, like, hardcore mode or not? And now we're getting, like, hardcore servers, this and that, right? Because I don't want to have, like, a good progress and invest, like, let's say, two months into my character. And then after two months and hundreds of hours, I suddenly die and I lose everything I've done. Like this is like this is why it's like so exciting and why you have this kind of adrenaline each time you fight against something. So your your playthrough is definitely very exciting. It's definitely a good feeling. Like I know this from Minecraft hardcore already, right? Like I, I sometimes build those very complex structures and then I almost die and I'm like my heart is like popping out of my chest almost. I'm I'm full of adrenaline, like but yeah, like doing this and then dying, you're gonna be super mad through the more recent hardcore movement on Classic WoW. We'll have to see how far people can take this insanity in the months and years to come.
Next is a player who I can totally relate to from when I first started really? World of Warcraft, Dysphoria. This player was famous for their Hunter vs. World videos, What's where that? they would take on high-level dungeons as a solo player, and oh. just see if they could overcome the odds and beat content that was designed to be done with a full party. Ah. Hunters in WoW have always been known for their ability to solo content. That's what I would do, actually. fighting enemies, long-ranged attacks, and a pet, so they're kind of the perfect class for the job. I remember yes. having a level 30-something hunter and the content i did was more or less i actually love hunter in wow and let me tell you guys why so i've played a lot of different mmos and there is not a single mmo that i have played that has such a fleshed out pet and uh character kind of combination like i give you guys an example so i also play other scrolls online and i play currently mostly a stamina warden I also play some, some magical one and in PvE for my build I'm actually using a pet, a, a, a bear pet and the thing is like this bear pet you can't interact and do like those kind of class and, 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 and pet kind of combos that you can do on WoW. So even though you have a pet there in ESO it's not nearly as good and as interactive as it is in freaking WoW. Plus, in WoW, you have different types of, of pets that belong to different groups and they have unique pet skills. You have several skills that are in line with your pet, like where, for example, you can boost your haste and your pet's haste, for example. Um, there's a skill that lets you stun freaking mobs with your pet. And like, <clears throat> I think hunters and like anything with pets when it comes to MMOs is best in WoW. Like, I can't. I don't know any single MMO that has such a good sort of interaction between the pet and the character and how useful your pet can be. So yeah, like doing solo content on a pet, uh, not on a pet, on a hunter, <laughs> on a pet, uh, on a hunter with a pet is, I, I'm pretty sure it's very fun. Like I also sometimes find like very, very difficult to beat uh, rares when I'm like leveling my hunters. I have like several hunters actually in WoW because I think this class is super fun. Maybe my most favorite one, actually. Closely followed by Warlock. I also love really Warlock. It's very fun, too. And, yeah, like, I think Hunters are really well designed in WoW. I, I love their design. exclusively working out how to solo various Scarlet Monastery dungeons. In some of Dysphoria's earliest videos, you can see them working on a route through Dire Maul North, using their pet to reset mobs and then quickly moving through the open spaces. They would gradually advance through feign death use and even showed off a King Gordok strategy, which is more or less exactly how people mapped out the optimal way to defeat the boss in Classic, which is crazy. The think a player had cracked this all those years ago solo with way less information on the internet is very impressive. Now, if you played a Hunter Endgame during Classic, chances are you also did some Diamond North runs, and there are several reasons why. It's a personal gold farm, mainly from disenchanting items in the tribute chest. You could sell items in the tribute chest too, as a player who was not in the dungeon could zone in and I wonder what gear this person clear has. it so other people could enter and gain various tribute world buffs. And whilst a lot of the run has been sped up and smoothed out, you have to hand it to the hunter that led the way to getting these tactics down. A more recent player now, but a super unique one, and one which I suspect you just may have heard of. Double Agent. So during the Double Cataclysm, agent? one of the changes made to the game was it's now that gathering herbs or, or mining would give a small bit of experience. Just a little helping hand to ensure that whatever you're doing in World of Warcraft, it's helping you progress towards your level cap. Not a big deal, right? Well, in the following expansion, Mists of Pandaria, World of Warcraft's first and only neutral race was introduced to the game, the Pandaren. Starting on the Wandering Isle, this race sees the good and bad sides of both the Horde and Alliance, and at the end of their starter journey you have, have to, to pick... make a choice to yes. commit to the faction that they prefer or that is what most people would do anyway what if you decided that all this fighting just really wasn't for you and you would rather just remain on the wandering isle one player named double agent did just that after exhausting the isle of quests the only repeatable method of experience gain left was gathering herbs or mining and that is just what he did requiring thousands and thousands of herbs to continually OMG. level up. This incredible journey saw him start at level 1, all the way up to 85 during Mists that of Pandaria. Is insane. There are two more factors that make this achievement even more impressive, by the way. First of all, there were no mount trainers on the Isle. You were expected to do this on the mainland after having picked a faction. So don't but wait, uh, wait a second. So isn't he like locked away from all the content? Can he even leave the island? Like, 
It is cool that he reached it, but what did he do after he reached it? Did he just not play his character anymore? Or he finally decided, you know what? I've uh, fulfilled my mission, I'm max level, and now I pick a faction. Like, did he ever pick a faction? Like, if you guys know him, let me know in the comment section. Or if he just stopped playing his character. Because I'm super curious on what his next move was after he reached his goal with this character. Because, like, he can't do anything, right? Like, he can't go for, like, dungeons, he can't do for, go for this and that. So, yeah, I wonder about his future on the Isle. You were expected to do this on the mainland after having picked a faction. So Double Agent rolled a Shaman in order to have access to Ghost Wolf, which would speed up this already yeah, lengthy makes process sense. considerably. Second is that the Wandering Isle, back then at least, had no mailbox, and the Heirloom tab didn't exist in the game until Warlords of Draenor, so we had oh. to do this without Heirlooms or a mount. And this yeah. is one of those rare occasions where the player has kept up his incredible feat of strength, tweeting in December 2022 that he had been able to achieve level 70, <laughs> which is now Guinness a World Records uh, again. without ever having left the Wandering Isle, finishing with a playtime total of 212 days and 22 hours. Wow. Now that is dedication. Next up, there have been many players over the years who have dedicated their character to challenges forsaking the combat the World of Warcraft is often huh? centered around. One of these is Nor or Rhinish. These were a gnome rogue and an undead priest. They were both role played as characters that did not want to cause harm in any way and play through the game as a pacifist. As part of the challenge, they would try How to keep weapon that? skills at one. This was done through having a fishing pole equipped as well as focusing on methods of experience gained that did not need combat, such as exploration, gathering quests, or retrieval quests. This was done early in TBC though, so eventually their possible XP gains did begin to plateau out towards the mid-twenties on both characters. In 2.3, Blizzard released repeatable battleground quests, which technically gave this player a new avenue to continue gaining XP, where Wait. they would only heal on Priest, and on the Rogue they aim to disrupt enemy flag carriers through CC, or carry their own flag using non-damaging oh. Rogue abilities, as well as equipping pieces of gear such as the Greenwell Palmer, which has a chance to salute the target on hit. I wonder what the theoretical level cap with no combat would be in Classic or TBC. Everything is a lot more mathed out these days. Even yeah. still, I'm not sure this is an avenue in the this game. This is that's actually very difficult, explored. I think. Maybe someone out there will try it one day. Till then, we have stories like this. Next wow. up is one of those names you've almost certainly heard of at some point. Maybe? It's one of World of Warcraft's most well-known players to represent a single class. I'm not sure what made them more famous, finding so many janky spell interactions, dedication to soloing content, wait, or wait, the fact wait, wait, wait. that he was a troll when pretty much every other famous mage from back in the day was undead. I am of course talking about Fax Monkey. Whilst Hunter was think good I've at seen his things, channel mages before. could often take it one step further, especially in vanilla with no AoE cap and elites which could often take out mages in a few hits. Fax Monkey showed how powerful mage is actually difficult to play. was back then, through repeatedly moving back and using Frost Nova, and just doing things which realistically very few players, let alone classes, would have been capable of doing at the time. Not to mention his one versus many PvP videos, which there's more than just a few amazing mages over the He's years who have been able to show just how overpowered this class really is in vanilla or finding out that spell steal in tbc could lead to some pretty like what i love about mage and we also have this in a uh, retail wow is like this 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 the skill ceiling is crazy high so it is very difficult to play and it's very hard to master but the ceiling is so high that you can reach a very crazy height in performance that you can't on freaking other classes. And we have seen this for so many expansions and patches, even when it comes to M+. Like, mages were always one of the highest damage outputting uh, classes uh, in WoW. Like, they had scores that you could barely reach with other classes. Like, shamans often fell behind, like, shadow priests couldn't catch up. Warlocks were often behind mages and... We have seen this on the DPS rankings and stuff, like on Raider.io, for example. And yeah, it is insane. Like you can do a lot with Mage, but it's also very, very dif dif difficult to play. Like I've been playing Arcane Mage for some time and there are just so many uh, cooldowns you have to manage. When you put this kind of circle down, like you need to stand nearby it. And uh, yeah, there's like, you have to have this kind of proc. Same with like the fire mage. So if you play a fire mage, you need to proc this. You need to get this effect. You have to wait for this cooldown. 
it's definitely a little annoying sometimes because you have to be very stationary as well. You need to time everything. It's, it's a bit challenging to, to master, but the results are insane. If you're a good mage, even in PvP, you are a monster. You are a beast. Like, you're very hard to beat. Hilarious results, such as the fire shields that Kobolds used in AV stacking with your spell power, which meant you could <coughs> go grab a few buffs from the nearby Kobolds in the mines wow. and then just run around and microwave people. Seeing a mage <laughs> just run straight into a whole pack of alliance must have and been AOE fun. them down in a matter of seconds, even when they're in ice block, will always be something that's memorable. There's been so many unique players and play styles over the years that people have come up with to really push the boundaries of what both of themselves and their class are capable of. Whether it's a grind that lasts thousands of hours, soloing content, or role-playing in a certain way, it goes to show what MMOs are all about. It's that diversity of content, the ability to create your own story, and the chance to be a player who goes down I the like history books of this More game freedom. for making memories for so many others. Those are the few I wanted to cover today. Let me know which players have made an impression on you over the years, whether they were a big part of your server, you watched them on Warcraft movies, or anything else I think else Double Agent T did something about it. very and unique. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. And I'll see you all in the next one very soon. Right. This is actually interesting. But yeah, this double agent guy, I'm actually surprised you could do that. Just collecting herbs to max level, staying in one zone and no mountain, anything you have to walk there. Same with the guy that reached uh, max level naked. Like, what was his name again? Got something? Got rot, right? Got rot. And this is insane, like, because, like, you have to be super careful to select the mobs, right? If you're, like, a warrior and you don't have any weapons, any gear, like, there need to be mobs that you can kill very easily, but that still gain XP, or you have to do a lot of errant quests, where you're just running from A to B and you gain XP, right? Like, I mean, there are some quests in WoW where you only deliver something and you gain XP from that. But I, I see that like most quests in WoW is actually kill 10 of those uh, mobs, uh, kill those mobs, collect this item. You need eight of those items and maybe you have to kill like four or five mobs to get like one drop of this item. So like looking at the way quests are designed like in, in WoW and how you often have to actually kill stuff to collect some items that you turn in later on to get your quest uh, achieved and the XP. Like, I think this is really hard to do this without gear. So I think this is very uh, difficult. And yeah, what's like hard is also like this is what Double Agent did because this is so boring because you're not fighting, you're just running around collecting flowers. You gain probably like such a tiny amount of experience and it's just like so repetitive because you're always doing the same thing, always in the same zone. Like your brain is going to go crazy. Like you're going to go mad if you do this for, for months, right? But he had the patience to do it and he succeeded. So lots of respect for like double agent. Like this probably from all those challenges, I think that what double agent did is the one I would the least like to do because I, I i would get bored and burnt out very very fast and yeah doing this without gears also pretty pretty impressive but yeah that one guy that did like hardcore and no gear did he even succeed like did he did he reach max or he didn't like, i'm not sure like what he's up to these days and yeah like does anyone know if double agent actually did pick a faction after he was done or not let me know in the comment section yeah this is very interesting I myself consider doing some challenge runs like hardcore, but like I said earlier, I'm very frustrated at losing all my progress, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this, and then after two or three months I end up dying, but it's definitely a kick of adrenaline <laughs> like playing through. But yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time.